Thanks so much to all my patrons. Join now to help support the channel and help pick the books I review on this channel. Link in the description. And I am done. Okay, so I just got done reading The Dragon's Path by Daniel Abraham. This is book one of the Dagger and the Coin series. And I want to give you my unedited thoughts upon finishing this book, which was literally just right now. So, yeah, this is a hard one for me to rank. I really liked it, um, but I don't know if I loved it. So I'm going to give it a four and a half out of five. Um like pretty squarely in the middle of the four and a half. I don't think it's anywhere closer to five or four. Truly right in the middle. There's just so many good things about this book. And uh, and one very big problem with the book that uh, is almost is very in inexcusable to me um, that we'll talk about soon. Um, so before we go too much into it, uh, Daniel Abraham, this author, he is more popularly known as one half of the writing duo, uh, commonly known as uh, James S.A. Corey, uh, that wrote The Expanse. So if you weren't aware, because I wasn't up until uh, a while ago, uh, that The Expanse is written by two people. James S.A. Corey is a made-up name. Uh, I don't know the other person, but I know it's uh, Daniel Abraham. Um, and Daniel Abraham has also written The Long Price Quartet, which I think is popular. I know it's popular on BookTube, but I don't know if it's, like, widely popular. I, I think it is because when I read this book, uh, it said, like, the author of The Long Price Quartet on the cover of this book. Um, so I'm guessing that's his most popular book outside of The Expanse. Um, but I, this book was not on my radar at all. I, um, I do this Patreon raffle wheel every month. So if you remember my Patreon, you get to put a book or two on depending on the tier. Um, and I spin the wheel and whatever gets picked, I, I have to read. And Quicksilver won by Neil Stevenson. And I hated it. I dropped it very quickly on under reading it. I knew it would be a, just a chore that I, that I would hate. Um, and I've never DNF'd a book that was picked on my Patreon wheel. And I feel kind of unethical about doing that because, look, you paid money to be on this Patreon. Uh, you know, you got picked and all of a sudden I gave up on it. So I, I went back to the guy who, uh, who, who put it on there and I said, pick, pick a new book. Um, and I'll read that one. Um, and he picked this one. Thank goodness. Uh, because I went from a one-star DNF to a book that was close to five stars. That's great. Um, and I'd also recently read, sorry to go in such a diatribe on, on this author, but it's where my head's at. This is what happens when you don't script things. Um, but I also recently read, uh, in the past month, actually, Age of Ash. Um, Age of Ash is also written by Daniel Abraham, and I, I didn't love it. Um, didn't even like it. It was like a three stars, just totally eh. Um, but I did like The Expanse. Um, I liked The Expanse books I read. I, I never finished up the series because it never, it never really grabbed me. It didn't, I never read a five-star book from The Expanse, and I read three of them. And I'm like, I'm not going to go read a ten-book series if I'm not thrilled about it. I gave it a chance. Um, but I liked it, and I liked the writing. So I still kept feeling like Daniel Abraham has uh, the type of writing that I can vibe with. Uh, if, he, if he can nail the story, because the story was the problem uh, in, in Quicksilver. Uh, or not Quicksilver, in um, Age of Ash. That, that, but I like the, everything else about it. Um, and I know that's a big thing. Like, story is probably the most important thing about a book. At least it is for me. Um, so to fix, to say, like, oh, easy, fix the story. Um, but this one kind of did that. So this book, um, and, and we're going to quickly jump into the thing I didn't like about it because I can't talk about this book without telling you what I didn't like uh, because of how central it is to the story. But it's almost hard for me to tell you what this story is about um, because there's not a ton of overarching plot here. There are stories happening, but you know, when you're reading a when you're reading a fantasy series in the epic fantasy genre, which this one definitely is, um, or certainly feels like, you get these little stories happening, but you always get the sense of the bigger story going on. You know, we're slowly marching towards a goal. And maybe we will achieve it, maybe we won't, but there's this brooding sense of there's a bigger thing happening. You know, in A Song of Ice and Fire, that would be um, the others. A and it would also be this idea that the thrones are going to be changing hands, maybe in a big way. And also the da Daenerys plotline. So you've got these big things happening. You kind of get the promise that these are all are going to come together eventually. Um, even though you have all these little stories. Here, I just don't, I don't see it. I, I don't get it. Um... It felt very unepic because I essentially got these four little stories, um, two of which intertwine with each other and two of which intertwine with each other, but not much else. So it feels like two distinct plot lines. 
and I'm not understanding where the story is going or, or the bigger, the bigger picture. And obviously that doesn't sound good. Right. Um, but that's the only problem I had with this book because I did love the, I did love the individual stories going on. I did love the characters. Um, I did love the writing style. I, I love this world. Um, I love so many things about it. Um, but it just feels like there's something missing on the, on the big picture side of things that is distressing to me as the reader. It's almost like I have to uh, trust this author who I don't have immense trust in to weave it together and to do this very strange storytelling device that I've never really encountered before. Um, you know, I, I guess that's not true. My, my, I mean, my favorite fantasy series of all time is Malazan and Malazan doesn't actually tell you what the bigger picture of story is until like book five. Um, but I was all in. Now, I, I obviously like that one a lot more. Um, but I gave the first book of my last one a four. And I, uh, I give this one a four and a half. So maybe maybe there's something to, to this. Uh, so, yeah, that's just my big qualm with this book. And with that out of the window, let's talk a little bit about what the story is about more on the micro scale because we have to. Um, but there's two separate stories going on. Um, in one of the stories, you have a, a young woman uh, not even a woman. I, she's a, she's a girl. She's definitely under 18. I get the sense of in the story. Eh, maybe not. Maybe she's like 18 and she is a orphan and she's been brought up by a bank in this city and by somebody who works for the bank. And so she, um, belongs to the bank. And as the story starts out, there is this city that she lives in is about to get conquered by an outside force. You, they know that they're going to get conquered. And so before that conquering happens, um, they, the owners of the, this bank decide to ship all of the money and paperwork associated with this bank, untold riches, across to another branch of their bank in a faraway city. And it's going to be snuck inside of like a wagon, and it's going to have this girl you know, in charge of it because she is somebody that nobody would identify with, with trying to do this sort of thing. And they hire this famous ex like general who is now, uh, you know, taking a step back in his life to, to work on this caravan. And he's, and, and so it's the story is told between these two people, this, this badass guy and this really unassuming girl as they go on this adventure, trying to get the money out of town. There's obviously lots of, uh, lots of issues that go on between them on trying to hide this money away. Um, and without spoiling too much of the story, but I don't think it's much of a spoiler. I'll, I'll kind of tease a little bit about what happens, but the girl decides along the way that I don't want to deliver the money to the bank. I want to start my own bank in this other city and try to run things myself. And that's kind of where her storyline goes. And the rest of the story talks about that and with this other guy that's trying to protect her. Now, over time, kind of decides that she's like a daughter figure to him because he lost his daughter and his wife in a horrific incident. So he sort of unofficially adopts this girl. Now, in the other story, we've got this, uh, this guy who is a loser and he's part of this military, the military that take, took over that town. And he finds himself in a position of power. Um, and it finds himself turned into a war hero as he goes back home. And as he goes back home, we get the point of view of another person who's a part of one of the factions in this kingdom. And they're trying to play a power game on who's going to be the in favor family with the king and lots of turmoil, internal turmoil going on here um, with these different families fighting each other and trying to get favor with the king or, or maybe even take out the king. And that's the story. Um, there's a lot of twists and turns along the way. It's a lot more interesting than I just presented to you, but that's the story in a nutshell. And I just don't get where it's going. Um, but I'm intrigued. I'm very intrigued and I'm for sure committing to reading this story, uh, as it goes further. Um, the world building is a little narrow. I mean, the world is not large. Uh, most of the story takes place in three different cities, uh, a little bit in between, but not much. Um, the map is not huge, feels narrow. Uh, the, the locations don't feel very unique. They feel very samey to each other. I don't get that visualization of this world like I would in other books, uh, that really impressed me. Um, it wasn't bad and 
but it, it, nothing was crazy. You know, the, it, a lot of the culture feels like um, carbon copy from a million other books where it doesn't have all these unique names for different things and all these cultural specific things. There's a little bit of that, but not much. Um, so the world building, I'd say, is a little bit on the light side. Uh, in terms of the fantasy elements of the story, there's not much. Um, I mean, you, there is these, the story is called The Dragon's Path, and there's all these constant references to the dragons that used to live in this world and, and be in charge of this world. They've long since died off. Um, and outside of that, there's really no magical elements that are going on in the story. I like that kind of thing. Um, I, I, I oftentimes, some of my favorite fantasy stories have very, very light fantasy elements in them. Now, perhaps we're going to get heavy fantasy elements in. I don't know how I'd feel about that if all of a sudden we got the introduction of dragons again and we go from very light fantasy to very, very hard fantasy as we go along. Um, but yeah, that's the, the fantasy elements, pretty light here. But the heroes of the story are the very intriguing, albeit narrow, scope of the plot. The characters are wonderful. I mean, the characterizations here are extremely well done. I mean, all of these characters have wonderful, wonderful motivations that you can very clearly tie to the, what makes these characters tick. Uh, they're very unique. Uh, there's some wonderful moments that happen here that are character-defining moments that were jaw-dropping. Um, and that, and that kind of goes into the plot as well. I mean, these truly these moments where I went, oh my god, I can't believe this book went there. And it didn't feel like that kind of book. And... I can't wait to find out how this is going to impact the characters. And that's when you know that you have um, very engaging characters, when these big moments happen and you're not just thinking about how are these events going to impact the landscape of this world, but you're thinking, how's that emotionally going to impact these characters? And that's when you're invested. And that's what happened here. Um, in terms of the writing quality itself, I found it to be um, very good. Uh, I think Daniel Abraham is a is a very very good writer, uh, well above average. You know the prose is not going to be flowery. Very few authors do that in fantasy, um, but it's it's very well done. I mean, he spends a lot of time setting up a scene, and it would probably get annoying if we were in this Wheel of Time scenario, like Robert Jordan did, which annoyed me about Robert Jordan, even though I I I, I love the Wheel of Time, but. The characters went to, you know, a hundred different locations, and every time we went somewhere, I mean, heck, you walk into an inn, and Robert Jordan will spend three pages talking about the clothing all the people in the room are, are wearing. You know, you get some of that element here, but there's not a lot of different locations. Um, but, you know, Abraham really wants you to visualize what's going on here, and, and he does a good job with that. Um, so, yeah, uh, ultimately, like, who am I, who do I recommend this book to? Um, I'd say that if you like a more political book with some intrigue um, with some low fantasy elements to it, then this is a great, great book to pick up. Um, you know, I, I like that kind of thing. I think you need to have this expectation in your head. Like you're not going to quite get the overall story. Hopefully it exists, um, but it, but it doesn't exist in this first book. Um, but yeah, if you're looking for a fun kind of political thriller fantasy story with these old school kind of fantasy vibes to them, this is a great book to check out. Uh, so pick it up. I'd love to talk to people about this. I don't think there's a ton of people out there that have read this. Maybe there are, but yeah, the, check it out. Come to my discord. Let's chat about it. As I go through my reading journey, I'm probably gonna read the next one in a few months. Um, so maybe we catch up by then and we can talk about it as a group. That'd be awesome. All right, so that is going to wrap it up for me. Thank you so much for watching this review, and as always, happy reading to you. Thanks again to all of my patrons. The special shout out to my Ascendant Tier and Librarian Tier patrons Anna G, CJ, Doust, Darren, Gil, Gregory, JD, Jonathan, Nathan T, Nev's Book Channel, Orthodoxia, Ron Reich, Russell, Ryan L, Sydney Baker, Tay C, Tahir, Tommy, Zion. Anna, Andra, Blair, Brock, Evan, Joe UK, Cat Mick, Michael Sugarman, Philippe, Sky, and Wacky. Thanks for sticking to the end of this video, and if you want to watch some more content from my channel, click over here and I've got some good videos for you. Thanks so much.